We are saved from eternal damnation. We are saved from the wrath of God. But nowhere in the word of God does it say we are saved from the wrath of man. And today, the church is at a place where the wrath of man is coming against the church in so many forms. I'm Pastor Glenn Garcia. I'm the senior pastor at New Hope Ministries of Central Denver. I come today to share my testimony and to share with what the Lord's done for me. I grew up um, in a good household with both parents. Uh, at a young age, my parents both came to the Lord, and that was early in my life. But by the time I was about nine or ten years old, my household, my parents started to backslide, and um, I grabbed a hold of that, and I, I myself started to look at the things of the world. By the time I was eleven, um, in spite of the fact that I had been touched by the Lord, I'd actually had an encounter with God as a, as a young child. But by the age of eleven, I was enticed by the things of the world. I was curious about the things of the world, which is how it starts out for many. And by the time I was thirteen, I was in all-out rebellion, starting to dabble in drinking and in, in marijuana use. Um, more interested in girls in the ways of the world than I was the things of the church and by the time I was about 13 I, you could no longer keep me in the church house but I believe it's time to start really grabbing a hold of what we believe in and in grabbing a hold of what we believe in Jesus Christ crucified Jesus Christ risen the blood shed before Amen. us and the work that the cross is doing in our lives. We've got to also grab hold of the fact that the rapture is imminent and that we are people called to start being the real church, the real body of Christ. Um, at that point, my dad had gone to the world and uh, also my mom for a brief time. But I spent the next 20 to 25 years of my life definitely running from God and chasing the things of the flesh, chasing sinful desires. Um, again, about that age of 13, I was started involving myself with drugs, the party scene, um, and gangs. From there, continued that lifestyle, and um, by the time I was about 17, I was no longer just uh, involved with gangs and using drugs, but in gangs and selling drugs and I let that run the course of my life for the next few years. When you start to settle a dispute by agreement, what you are doing when you start to feed on those things of the world is you are settling a dispute between the flesh and the spirit by coming to agreement with the evil one. You're coming into agreement with the flesh. And this is what is happening too much in the American church today. We cannot be a light if, if the light that is in us is only darkness. Um, during that time of being away from God, beginning, stepping away from the church, I had met the woman that is now my wife. She was my girlfriend for quite some time. Um, and she never participated in the drugs, in the gangs, in the party scene like I did. But I would, by the things I did, I, allow, I brought that into our house. By the things I did, I did damage to my daughter, to my son, to my two daughters, and to my son. You know, never personally abusing them, but I definitely showed them a damaging lifestyle. I was a damaging example, a horrible example of what a person, much less a, a man, was supposed to be. And so... I knew these last couple of years before I came to the Lord, I knew my life was over. I thought I was going to be dead or I was going to end up in prison. But I had a, I, I, and I didn't know how, but I knew that my life as I knew it was over. And it was in 2011, um, I left for Valentine's Day. Uh, after an argument, I left to go um, run amok in the streets, was pulled over. Um, 
and taken to jail subsequently. And what you think is real, what you value, is what you're going to go after. There is nothing greater than this real relationship with Jesus. And I'm telling you, the Word of God warns us against becoming cold, against becoming religious. And if you're into religion, I'm sorry, but I'm telling you that there's a better way, that there's a relationship that you need to be involved with. Sometimes He will walk into your heart, He will walk into the room, He will touch you, you will fall, and you will be crying. Other times He will touch you, He will rise you up, and you will be leaping, you will be rejoicing. That is what death is all about. That is what victory is all about. That is what emotion is all about. It's about what He stirs within you. I was given an opportunity and I, I found myself here at New Hope Ministries where there's a men's and a women's rehabilitation home and I entered that men's rehab home and even at that point I hadn't fully surrendered to what God had wanted me to do. I, I, I thought I had a plan or a per I thought I could outsmart God. I thought I could again manipulate the system but a couple days in the Lord really touched my heart and gave me an ult ultimatum gave me the opportunity to surrender and at that point in um, sometime around March or April of 2011 I really gave my heart to God from that point I have went forward and continued to grow in the grace in the knowledge of Jesus I, encounters with God um, experienced the move of the Holy Spirit and really expect experienced the power the cleansing, the healing, the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus and of the cross of Calvary. You know, we're a church that is here for everybody. Not everybody to come and, and stay as you are, but for everybody, in no matter what condition, for everybody to come and experience the healing, the redemptive power of Jesus. You know, I've been transformed, like I said, it was 2011. And from that time, I, I, I haven't looked back. I haven't looked back on, back on the things of the world, only to recognize what God has done in my life, to testify of what God has done in my life. And so that brings us to this day where we are. Um, my wife and I are the pastors here at New Hope Ministries of Central Temple. Without our our covering organization, our covering church, our, our parent church, uh, New Hope Ministries of Denver, we wouldn't be here. Without the grace of God, we wouldn't be here. But I recognize that His plan for me was not forsaken by my mistakes, it was only waiting for my surrender to God's Word, His will, and His way. And I know that His plan is for each and every one of us out there. And I know that it's for everybody that still has breath in their lungs, that they have what it takes within them to cry out to God, to surrender their heart, surrender their life to God, and to truly start walking in the fullness of what they were created for. It's about what He stirs within you. And I know there are times where we don't feel. And that's where faith comes in. And that's where faith is real. I'm here to tell you, each and every one of you, as we get stirred up for Resurrection Sunday, that it's not about a season, but it's about a relationship. All of this stuff is real. And that's what excites me. That's what stirs me up. That's what I am desiring to see in everybody in this room tonight, today. That's what, I'm, that's what takes us out to the streets. That's where I can talk to somebody when, when it's not comfortable. That's where I desire to please my God. Because you know what? Because He's real to me. Because, not because I make Him real. Because He has revealed Himself to me. You know, our, our vision is really to reach out and reach the lost at any cost. We are a ministry that is a praying ministry. We, um, from the moment we knew we were going to open a church, the first meeting we called was a prayer meeting, which still stands to this day, a Tuesday prayer meeting in, in a front room, and you know, that was our first meeting. Also, we are definitely reaching out to the community. Um, currently, we've um, adopted families throughout the holidays. We are always giving clothes. Um, 
prayer. We're always available to those in this, in our neighborhood, those that the Lord's put in our path that are even outside of our neighborhood. We are available to speak, to pray, to comfort, and to share the love of Christ, the power of Christ to redeem. But I tell them, I say, you know what? I would not be a man of God if it wasn't for praying and fasting. There would be no New Hope Ministries all for Christ campus if it was not for prayer and fasting. And this place will not grow if it's not for prayer and fasting. I would not see the chains broken off of my neighbor. I would not see the chains broken off of my cousin, off of my brother, if it were not for prayer and for fasting. And I'm about to see it happen. I would not see this building that the Lord has for us if it's not for prayer and for fasting. And I do, I thank God for His mercy and for His grace. You know, we, put, we try to do um, once a month, actually going out on the streets um, in West Colfax, West Colfax of Denver, in that neighborhood, and give out clothes. Again, always prayer, always sharing the Word of God. And we're looking to go out and um, wash feet, give out shoes and socks, and really to be the hands and feet of Christ, to really follow the example that Christ gave us and be there for those that are lost, those that are hurting, those that are broken, and be there for those that the Lord has put in our path. And so that's our plan for um, future outreach. And, and again, we plan on doing that once a month. We, we go out, and I'm always available, always. Um, you, you often find me walking the streets of West Colfax in, in central Denver there and, and, and talking to people, sharing with people. It's a, an exciting neighborhood, and it's something that I'm blessed to be a part of. It's an area, a mix that I'm blessed to be a part of.